So to begin the uh, announcement, we'll give the uh, overnight update, and I'll turn it now over to Dr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Premier. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to those joining us on the line and to those watching online. Uh, I'll begin today with an update on our cases. Since the media briefing yesterday, we have 18 new positive cases. Of these, 16 are in the Eastern Health Region, one is in Central Health Region, and one is in the Labrador Grenfell Health Region. It appears that the new case in Central Region is due to community transmission, as there was no history of travel or exposure to a known case. Our public health investigations are ongoing. All those considered close contacts will be advised to quarantine. This brings our total number of cases to 120. That includes 111 cases in Eastern Health Region, three in the Central Health Region, one in Western Health Region, and five in Labrador Grenfell Health Region. We have a breakdown uh, of 57% of our cases are female and 43% are male. We have 11 people under the age of 20, 16 between 20 and 39, 16 between 40 and 49, 29 between 50 and 59, 22 between 60 and 69, and 26 above age 70. Two people have been admitted to hospital due to the virus. Four people have now recovered. <coughs> In total, we have tested 1,927 people. Of these individuals, 1,807 have been confirmed negative. I want to speak now about a hospitalization at a health facility in St. Anthony. An individual was admitted to the Charles S. Curtis Memorial Hospital. The patient had tested positive for COVID-19. At this point, we understand the patient did not travel and did not have contact with a confirmed case of COVID-19. So it appears this is a case of community transmission as well. Patients who are in close contact with the confirmed case have been provided with information about the virus. They are being tested and are in quarantine. The staff who had close contact with the confirmed case have been identified. They are currently in self-isolation and are being followed up by public health. Contact tracing began after receiving the patient's diagnosis as per routine public health protocol. And those who had close contact are being followed up by public health. The affected patient is in hospital in isolation with all the appropriate precautions in place. This includes the use of personal protective equipment for staff who are caring for the patient. A testing and assessment center opened in St. Anthony today. This center will support the increased number of people requiring assessment. Labrador Grenfell Health has been working with us on planning for COVID-19. The planning they have in place enables their staff to act quickly and helped reduce the risk of spread of the virus for staff and patients. The health and safety of the population remains everyone's top priority. All health regions are working in tandem with us. As a province, we continue to work closely with our federal and provincial and territorial counterparts. Our public health system is responding, taking action, and working well. The health system continues to work diligently and I commend everyone for their actions and responsiveness in this situation. To summarize, there are 18 new cases since yesterday's media availability. The total number of cases in the province is 120. By health regions, we have 111 cases in Eastern Health, three in Central Health, one in Western Health, and five in Labrador Grenfell <coughs> Health. We now have known community transmission in the province. This is a significant development. We have said on many occasions that we need to behave as if this virus is circulating in our communities already. Today, we have proof that this is true. I am calling on all of you to do your part to reduce the spread of COVID-19 in our province. Stay home unless it is essential. And by that, I mean groceries, medical supplies, hygiene products, and essential work. Do not hang out with your friends. If you must go out, maintain a physical distance of six feet between yourself and others. Wash your hands well and frequently. Finally, and I cannot stress this enough, if you are sick with cold or flu-like symptoms, you must stay home. It is all of our responsibility to flatten the curve. 
our collective actions will have significant impact on how COVID-19 progresses in our province. And I thank you for the time, your time today. Back to you, Premier. Thank you, Dr. Fitzgerald. These are somber messages for Newfoundland and Labrador. Today is Saturday and a weekend. I hope you and your family that are listening and watching today are making the adjustments as best you can to deal with the healthcare crisis that we're dealing with within our province. As we, as in the past and every day, we are continuing with our regular meetings, our updates every day with our health officials and our all party committee. For some of you, and it's turning out to be what is a routine for all of us and a routine, routine for all of you. But I will stress again, as Dr. Fitzgerald just said, that we cannot take this situation too serious. We must do our part. Let's not take these routines as we see today something that can be for granted. They are not. Rest assured that we will do everything that we can to support you, your safety, and your health through this challenging time. Thousands of you I know have been joining in every day for the updates on various media platforms. So once again, I want to thank Dr. Fitzgerald and Dr. Hagee for sharing the information, the number of cases and the demographics of those that are in infected in the past. Those updates will continue. We've been in a public health state of emergency for weeks now. I know this has been a big adjustment for your daily routine as we make our way through this pandemic together. It is important that we continue to follow the guidelines in the strictest manner possible. What is sombering today is that we have the highest infiltration of cases in the country, in Newfoundland and Labrador, next only to Quebec. This is the highest number of 100,000 people. It's Newfoundland and Labrador. We are number two in the country. So we cannot let up. Today, there will be a stark reminder going out to the province this afternoon with a text alert message. This will be a critical reminder for everyone to stay at home. And for travelers from outside our province or traveling into our province, Regardless of your origin from another province or an international traveler, the message will be self-isolate for 14 days on your return to this province. Over the last few days, we've mentioned some of the great community efforts that we've seen throughout the province, where people are providing supports while keeping physical distancing and safety at the forefront. There's been lots of talk about truckers who are providing essential services for people in Newfoundland and Labrador. So today, we are happy to be able to report that Marine Atlantic has teamed up with a well-known group in our province, the Salvation Army, to provide commercial truckers with supper who are overnighting, waiting for the Port of Ass crossing tonight. I've heard they've even had a very hot meal cooked up to support these essential, these commercial drivers uh, who are providing essential services to Newfoundland and Labrador. Now, speaking of essential goods, people that live in our communities, will you have options to go online if you require essential goods, especially our seniors who can call the Red Cross also for support lines? It's by using the online services that we can keep the social distance and the fiscal distance as required to help push back the spread of COVID-19. Shopping online for those essential services helps us stopping the spread and slowing the spread of COVID-19, plus it will support the local economy. Now today I also have a few things that I want to announce. Due to the concerns of COVID-19 and the global pan pandemic, the 2020 Newfoundland and Labrador Summer Games that were scheduled to be held in Bay Roberts in August will be postponed. Because of the current public health state of emergency, all sport facilities are closed. Athletes are, no, are not able to train in a regular way. No play downs are not happening and teams just simply cannot be selected. So working with the department and with the, and with the town of Bay Roberts, the decision has been made unanimously and with mutual agreement to postpone the 2020 uh, summer games. 
Now the provincial government recognizes that these athletes, this is disappointing, but we recognize that these athletes, these sport, sporting organizations, the sponsors, and all the organizers, they've put a lot of work, and I want to thank you, but realizing that this is a postponement, not a cancellation. This decision is very consistent with what we've seen with other sporting organizations around the world, including the International Olympic Committee, with the canceling of the Olympics in Japan this year. Announcements like this are not easy. They seem a long way off. But we know, and people in this province should know, that we are seeing this not as something that could last days or weeks, but months. So the decision as late as August, moving this decision and postponing this today, is the right thing to do. But I do want to recognize the work and the time and the dedication of the coaches, the families, as I've mentioned, the sponsors that have done some tremendous work on this. This again, these games are postponed, they are not canceled. So we look forward to working with the uh, community of Bay Roberts and the rescheduling at a later date. Today I also want to take some time to recognize that this is a challenging time for many people as we ask you to stay home. We recognize the strain of the situation is placing on many people, on families, particularly those living and, exposed, and with an increased exposure to violence. I want you to remember that you are not alone in this situation. As a province, we are here to help. There are resources that are available to you. And I encourage you to visit our violence prevention website at gov.ca slash VPI. There you can find information of the services that are available in your communities and within your region. And as always, if you are in immediate distress and need help, call 911. We are also working with the Federal Department of Women and Gender Equality at, on this very issue. As part of an aid package, the federal government is recognizing the need for more resources and is providing funding to organizations that will work directly with women who are facing violence. Our own Office of the Status of Women and Justice and Public Safety is working with their federal counterparts to ensure that the funding moves quickly to those groups who are on the ground offering vital frontline services to those in need. Now we need to be clear, regardless of the troubling times that we find ourselves in, make no mistake, violence of any kind cannot be tolerated. We will continue to do everything that we can to keep you safe during this difficult time. I want to remind everyone that's listening and watching today, we know that doing everything, we know that you will do everything to support you, to support, to support your neighbors, and to support your communities. We are all there to protect you and support you during this difficult time. So we're working with our colleagues in the federal government. And we're meeting every day with our health officials here in the province and federally, and with our all-party joint committee, working very hard on your behalf to support you. So we've made some tough decisions. We've put some tough guidelines in place. But you can see with today's announcement of 120 cases in Newfoundland and Labrador moving in all regions of this province, we must do everything that we can as a community by working together to stop the spread of COVID-19 through Newfoundland and Labrador. 